In the last few weeks, I've been getting people asking me to take a look at Zorin OS because Zorin OS is a desktop Linux distribution that has some popularity. It ranks rather high in DistroWatch's page hit rankings, which DistroWatch rankings don't mean anything. They're not a real metric of how many people actually use something. I mean, according to DistroWatch, Zorin OS is much more popular of a Linux distribution than Arch Linux, which we all know that's ridiculous, right? How many people have you come across in real life that were running Zorin OS, right? You, you've never met that person, but how many people in real life do you know running Arch Linux? Yeah, millions, right? <laughs> so distro watch rankings don't necessarily mean anything, but people are interested in Zorin OS, especially when it comes to a Linux distribution that's new user friendly and is very attractive to potential new users switching from Windows or Mac OS. And that's kind of the niche that Zorin fills. So I'm going to go to the Zorin website and grab their latest ISO. So this is Zorin.com. And if I go to the download button, I notice that they have a free version and a paid version. So the paid version is $39 and that excludes sales tax. And that's for Zorin OS 16.1 Pro. And what does that come with? I'm sure mainly you're paying for support. So you get some uh, extra support from the Zorin OS team if you pay for the distribution. I don't mind that. Uh, we get some premium desktop layout, so a little more artwork and things like that. They do offer a free version, and uh, sometimes I'll actually pay for the paid versions for these uh, first look and impression kind of reviews, but today I think I'm just actually going to grab one of the free editions. So they have the core edition here, if I click on that, what is the core for basic use on modern computers? So that's what I'm going to go ahead and download. So I've spun up a virtual machine here to take a look at Zorin OS 16.1. This is the core edition, and I'm going to choose try or install Zorin OS from the boot menu here. And it's running this familiar uh, checking MD5 sum screen. If you guys have ever run Ubuntu, uh, run Ubuntu live, USB sticks, things like that, you've seen this screen before. So Zorn is based on Ubuntu. I actually didn't check <laughs> before doing this video, but it's obvious that this is Ubuntu based. And we launch directly into our live environment, which I believe is a customized version of the GNOME desktop environment. And it immediately gives us our installer. And I'm assuming this is the Ubiquity installer, the standard Ubuntu installer. We have two options to start with. Do we want to try Zorin OS? So I'm assuming that would close the installer and we could play around in the live environment without actually installing it. Or we could go ahead and run through an installation. I'm gonna run through an installation. First, we need to select our keyboard layout. The default is English US, which is correct for me. So I'm gonna click continue. And then updates and other software. Do we want to download updates while installing Zorin OS? Sure, I think this ISO is a couple of months old, so it'd be good to go ahead and have it update. Do we want to install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats? Yes, you wanna make sure you always tick that on anytime you're installing Ubuntu or an Ubuntu derivative. You need, especially the Wi-Fi drivers, if you're on a laptop, you also need these multimedia codecs for a, a good video playback experience. And then there's also this option here. Do you want to not participate in the census? So I guess we have to opt out of some kind of telemetry. I guess you notice it's worded, don't participate in the census. So I'd have to tick that on not to participate. I actually don't mind participating in these sorts of uh, telemetry things as long as they're upfront and letting you know exactly what they're collecting and things like that. Sure. I'm going to click continue. Now the installation type, do we want to erase the disk and give the entire virtual hard drive of this virtual machine to Zorin OS? That's what I'm going to do. Or we could use something else and that would be going through and doing some manual partitioning yourself. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, erase the disk and let Zorin have the whole disk. So I'm going to click the button install now. And then we get this warning saying that it's about to format the drive and write to the disk. I'm going to click continue. And now we choose our time zone. It has correctly chosen the central time zone in the US for me. So I'm just gonna click continue. Then we need to create our username. So I'm gonna call my user DT. And then we need to create a strong and complicated password for the DT user. And then repeat that strong and complicated password. And then do we want to log in automatically? No, I like having to enter a password to get into my desktop because 
for privacy, right? You don't want anybody just to be able to access your computer, right? You should always have to enter a password to get in. You also have the option of use Active Directory. I won't tick that on, so I'm just gonna click continue. And now Zorin OS will continue to install. This typically takes about five to 10 minutes on my hardware, so I'll be back once this installation has completed. And the installation completed, that took uh, about 10 or 12 minutes, and it says installation is complete. You need to restart the computer in order to use your new installation. So I'm gonna click restart now. And we get our login menu, so let me go ahead and click on my username DT, and let's enter our strong and complicated password. we get a startup sound. Wow, that's a really, really long startup sound, but I do appreciate that they have the, uh, the login sound. And then we get our welcome screen. Do we want to start a tour? So tell us a little bit about the feature. So looks like we get a little slideshow here. I'm actually not going to take the time to read it. It doesn't look like it's too detailed on information anyway. So that was the little welcome app. So let's see what applications are installed out of the box here in the core edition. So let's break it down by category. I'm going to go into accessories. We have GNOME clocks. We have GNOME files. That is the Nautilus file manager. And if we go GNOME maps here, this is the mapping utility. And it's using some geolocation information here to pinpoint exactly where I am. If I zoomed in, it would actually tell you exactly where I am. So I don't think I'm going to zoom in on that. But let's go to about, this is maps 3.38.2. Let's close out that and go back into the menu, into accessories. Our text editor, of course, is GNOME's plain text editor called gedit. This is gedit 3.36.2. Close that out, gedit, is a fine little plain text editor, not much to it, but it's really got everything most people will need for a plain text editor. We have the to-do application, we have GNOME Weather, which is a really neat little weather app. I won't open it because it's going to use geolocation information again when I open it. It's going to pinpoint exactly where I'm at in the world and it's going to tell me my five-day forecast. Under the games category, we have All Riot Solitaire. So this is just a standard little card game, right? Actually, there's a variety of card games associated with this one program. If I go to about, this is All Riot 3.32.9, a standard a little GTK game here. And we also have Mahjong, Mines, Quadrupestle, and Sudoku. Under the graphics category, we have GIMP. Let's see what version of GIMP we're on here. If I go to help and about, this is GIMP 2.10.18. GIMP is a fantastic free and open source alternative to something like Adobe Photoshop. GIMP is actually what I use to create all of my YouTube thumbnails, the channel header, all the artwork associated with my channel. I do everything using GIMP. Also under graphics, we have our image viewer, we have LibreOffice Draw, and we have photos. Click on Photos. This is another standard GNOME application. And this is Photos 3.34.1. It's just a little simple photo managing application. Under Internet, we have Firefox as our default web browser. Let's see what version of Firefox we're on. I'm assuming it would always be the latest version, even though it's running uh, based on Ubuntu for web browser. Security is important. Security updates are important. So I would think that you would always be on the absolute latest Firefox 97.0.2. Now that is actually not the absolute latest version of Firefox because Firefox is on version 102, at least it is on my Arch Linux based system that I run on my um, workstation here. Also under internet we have Remina, that is a remote desktop application. Basically this is a little GUI program that can manage things like SSH connections. So if you're constantly remoting into like a remote web server or something like that, Remina is neat, especially if you have multiple machines that you remote into. It's a nice little way to organize them. Under the office category, we have uh, calendar, contacts, evolution. Evolution is one of the standard email applications for Linux. Evolution is probably one of the better email clients for Linux, so that's nice to see that they're using that. Also, under Office, we had the LibreOffice suite. We had Calc, Draw, Impress, and Writer. 
Under the sound and video category, we have Bracero, which is GNOME's disk burning utility. Now that's interesting because these days, even though it's, it is a GNOME application, most Linux distributions usually don't ship Bracero because who burns disk anymore? Well, actually, I do. I still burn CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays, but still, uh, it's strange to see Linux distributions still shipping disk burning utilities out of the box. We have Cheese, which is our webcam application, PTV, which is GNOME's video editor. And I've actually used PTV a little bit in the past. It is a very plain Jane video editor, but it works. If you're just making simple cuts, you know, it, it works for what it is. It's not a good video editor. It's nowhere near the best free and open source video editor. There's several that are better than that. They're shipping the TV because it's part of the GNOME suite of applications. But really, if you're going to ship a video editor, I would ship something much better than Pativi. Rhythm Rhythmbox, though, is a fantastic audio player. One of the best music players out there for Linux. Let's see what version of Rhythmbox they're on. This is Rhythmbox 3.4.4. Rhythmbox can handle large catalogs, large libraries of music, and of course it can do some streaming as well. Also under sound and video, we have a sound recorder, and that just, you hit a button and it records your microphone. Very simple little application, not much to it. Videos is just GNOME's video player here and if I go to help oh, I was gonna see what version we're on do do I not get any kind of version information about this application I guess I don't I don't know too much about GNOME's video player though I, I typically either use MPV or VLC as my video players regardless of what Linux distribution or what desktop environment or window manager I'm using under system tools, we have additional drivers. That's to get your proprietary graphics drivers and Wi-Fi drivers. Remember, though, during the installation, I ticked on to install that stuff. But if I hadn't, I would click this program and it would install that stuff for us. Then we have a main menu, which I'm assuming would edit items in this menu. We have our settings manager. We have software, which is really what I was looking for. Let's actually check out our software center here. If I go into the little hamburger menu here. Uh, clicking on it, it's not doing anything out because this window is up. Let's go shopping. I guess I have to get rid of that first. And then about software. So this is GNOME's software center. So GNOME software 3.36.1 is the version. And right off the bat, I noticed they've got some editor picks here. I guess some of the top rated apps, one of them, Get Kraken, I know is proprietary software. So I wonder how they're installing that. They're installing that as a snap. So that's really cool. So they already have snaps integrated. So let me search for some other proprietary applications I know people would probably want. So let's search for Discord because I know Discord is available as a snap and as a flat pack. Did I not hit enter? Maybe just the internet is slow or maybe it's just taking a long time to sync. Yeah, I'm not sure why that search was was taking so long there. Let's try that one more time. No, let me try something just in the standard repo. Oh, I, uh, it finally popped up. Let me go back. I saw the screen pop up. Yeah, that was weird the very first time. That could have just been a, a me problem. Maybe there for a few seconds the network crapped out or something, but it looks like it's working now. So if I click on Discord and I click on Install, does it actually tell me what it's going to install it from? It looks like it's going to install it from FlatHub because it gives me the source. So it's installing Discord as a flat pack. So we got snaps and flat packs, and of course, your standard. Debian packages from the apt package manager here as well all inside this one store that is really really neat I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that download though and close that out now I'm gonna go ahead and do control alt T to see if we can bring up a terminal we can and let me go ahead and see if I can zoom in I'm gonna do a uname dash R let's see what kernel version we're on we're on 5.13 if I do a apt list space dash dash installed we'll get a list of all the applications installed out of the box that were installed through the apt package manager if I up arrow to get that command back this time I'm gonna pipe that through WC the word count program space dash L for a line count because I want a line count I really don't want a word count and 1869 lines were in that output which means there's 1869 packages installed through the apt package manager is htop installed htop is not how about let's sudo apt install htop give it our strong and complicated password 
And now the HTOP is installed, let's check out system resource usage. We're using 930 megs of the six gigs of RAM that I gave this virtual machine. That's pretty standard for the GNOME desktop environment. Let me quit out of HTOP and actually let me go ahead and quit out of the terminal here because the one thing I really want to check out is the settings because I know that we have some different things we can do with appearance. So let me get back into the settings here. Um, we've got background here, of course, for setting the various wallpapers and their wallpaper pack. I will say, and it looks really good. Ah, that is a gorgeous photograph, especially how it's a little darker than this very silvery light GTK theme they're using. That actually works perfectly. So I could definitely get down with something like that. Some of these wallpapers, I believe, are just part of the standard GNOME pack. I think I've seen that one before. I'm pretty sure I have. Yeah, I'm going to go back to this one here, that lighthouse picture. That's nice. I know that we can change the theme as far as the panel placement and things like that, but I don't know where that is here. I thought it would be somewhere at the top. Is there not like an appearance kind of thing? I don't know. Maybe if I just hit super to go back to the menu, a Zorin appearance. Maybe it's its own separate application. I guess it is. So it's separate from the settings manager. And by default, the layout is, of course, the traditional Windows 7 layout, which I think most new to Linux users, especially those coming from Windows, will appreciate the default layout. They probably wouldn't want to change it, but they have some other ones here. If I click on it, it's just a one click switch. And yeah, I, that was very minor, the changes, but you can see the panel gets a little smaller. Other than that, that's really, is the menu system any different? No, that's a very, very subtle change, uh, almost no change at all. And then this one here, I believe, just changes it more into almost like a Windows 11 layout because your taskbar now is a centered taskbar. But when you hit the menu system, you get your traditional kind of GNOME dash thing going. And then this fourth one looks like it is basically just GNOME. So standard GNOME shell uh, panel at the top. If I hit super, we get our dash that appears on the left side. So that's just a traditional GNOME layout. Not much to see there for me. I'll be honest, I kind of like this third one here with the centered taskbar and everything. I, I think that that's a rather unique look. I also like that the, the menu system on this is uh, the traditional GNOME menu system here where everything is just in one big category where I could cycle through all of the applications. I don't like fumbling around with those traditional menu systems much anymore. Now, one thing I don't like is I don't really like light themes. So can I do search for themes? Yeah, let's go back to Zorn appearance because other than the layout, let's go to theme and let's choose background dark. That's kind of a weird name to assign that background dark. <laughs> you would think it would be like a theme dark or mode dark because background backgrounds usually synonymous for wallpapers. I mean, I kind of figured what that was going to do, but still, that's a strange wording there. For an accent color, uh, let's do some orange to go with our purple because, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, <laughs> Ubuntu, I guess. <laughs> purple and orange seems to be the colors we're going with today. Yeah, I like the, uh, <laughs> it changes the accent colors, not just for the GTK applications, but also the icon set as well. That is really cool. So if I went to green, yeah, I think I'm just going to go with the, the purple here. Under interface, this is uh, just some more settings so we can toggle on and off animations. I'm assuming is that for animations when we show and hide or minimize and unminimize, things like that. Then we have a little cogwheel for taskbar settings. So is this where we can, yeah, okay, so we can change like the default size of the panel. Very cool. I was wondering if that was configurable or not. I kind of like the uh, 40 pixels there. We could also turn on IntelliHide and I actually like that because really most of the time do you really need to see the panel. So IntelliHide means the panel will get out of the way when an application, you know, hovers over it. So, or if I maximize it, right, it takes up the full amount of the screen so we get that extra 40 pixels at the bottom of the screen because 
I, I don't really need the taskbar <laughs> if I'm just doing something and one maximized application, for example, like a full screen web browser. So that's a really nice touch as well. Overall, I'm very impressed with this latest release of Zorin OS. I'm glad I took a look at it. People had been pestering me because it's been like three or four years since I took a look at Zorin on the channel. They're like, hey man, have you forgot about Zorin? You're making all these videos about people needing to switch from Windows over to Linux. You're showing them all these other beginner friendly Linux distributions, but Zorin OS is probably the best one. You should really be pushing that to people. And honestly, after taking a look at this latest Zorin OS, they're probably right. I think a lot of especially Windows users would be very comfortable in Zorin OS, and I think it's one that I probably should be promoting a little more. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Dustin, Gabe, James, Matt, Maxim, Michael, Mitchell, Paul, Wes, Wanya, Ball, Homie, Alan, Armor Dragon, Chuck, Commander, Angry, Diokai, Dylan, Marstrom, Erion, Alexander, Peace, Arch, and Vador, Polytech, Reality, Thrillist, Red Prophet, Steven, Tools, Devler, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Zorin OS would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. Now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I depend on you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. That's certainly one of the best GNOME desktops I've seen lately.